over the last couple days, I've finished up a project that I've been working on, which is to put a new gate into the fence line so that I can access the garden with the tractor and with the truck, specifically when I'm unloading manure for compost. So that's not done, but the gate structure itself is up. And the place where I wanted to put the gate, I don't know what I was thinking several years ago, because I planned out the garden and I have a roadway right where the gate was supposed to go, knowing that someday I would probably have a gate there. But I planted a plum tree right in the middle of that road. So as I said, I'm not sure how that happened. Uh, but except to say, I guess sometimes when I get a little overzealous and I plant too many things or order too many things, and then they come and I need a place to stick them. Um, my mind goes to where can I put this right now that's got nothing in it. And I stop thinking about all the other stuff that needs to take place and look out a little bit beyond that moment. So that's probably what happened. But at any rate, that's resulted in me needing to move that tree. And I don't just want to cut it off and kill it. It's a beautiful tree and it's doing really well. And I have another place for it, which doesn't require me to plant it in the middle of a road. So I'm gonna go do that now. Not that long ago, Ziggy and I had to have a pretty serious discussion. We live in the woods here in a pretty rural area, but we still have neighbors and Ziggy likes to visit them. Whenever I'm engrossed in a project, he waits until my head is down and then slinks off to explore. What are you doing? Come here. By the time I look up, he's nowhere in sight. None of my neighbors mind his visits. I, however, dislike this habit immensely. I've decided I need to refocus and retrain him. So far, except for a few slip-ups, mainly me not paying attention enough, he's doing pretty well. All right, so here's the tree, and this is Prunus Americanus plum root stock that I've planted here. I've got another one there, and a big one here, actually. I'm not sure why one has done so much better than the other. This is probably 15 feet at the very tip of those, and this one is I mean, not even seven feet. I can reach that without even full extension. This one's maybe a little bit more. But I've got a peach tree right there and a peach tree over there. So I'm gonna, you can see I've already dug the hole for this tree. About halfway, sorry, exactly halfway, actually I measured it last night, between that peach tree and this Prunus Americanus, which I'm gonna graft a peach. So what I'd like to do is have one, two, three, four peach trees right in this little area of the garden. I've already dug this hole, put the sod over here, and save the soil up here so I didn't have to rake it. Just put it in this bucket. And this hole is about two feet deep. So it should be not perfect yet, but uh, it's at least close enough to get me to the point where I don't have to start from scratch when I get the tree over here and see how deep it actually needs to be. A few things you should keep in mind when digging an established tree. First, no matter what size tree, rock, or whatever you're trying to get out of the ground, Know which part of your foot is safe to use. The middle of the arch is the least safe. It's fairly easy to sever the tendons that run the length of the bottom of your foot. I have an aunt who did it, and since then, I'm much more conscious of this. I prefer to use the ball of the foot. Secondly, you need the right tool. I guess need is too strong a word. You can definitely dig an established tree using a standard 10-inch spade. I've done it many times but I've also broken a lot of handles, damaged many trees, and been very frustrated a time or two. Like any other job, the right tool makes all the difference. I recommend a nursery spade. This one is made by King of Spades, and they chose their name well as far as I can tell. 
I love this shovel. It's got a 16 inch blade and a nearly indestructible handle. I can get down deep and use all the leverage I want. That last part is also important. Get down deep. You can essentially assume that the tree has more biomass below the ground than above. The old wisdom was that a tree's root zone was a mirror image of its canopy, at least in terms of volume and scope. We now know that's a substantial underestimate. There's no way to get down deep enough or dig a wide enough circle to get all that root structure and not damage it. But you want to do your best to get what is reasonably possible. You want to get down as far on the taproot as possible before severing it. This is a pretty harsh process for a tree. The more of that tree's life support system you maintain, the better. All right, well, I thought that was a rock, but it's actually a very substantial root. So that's about an inch through, maybe, three quarters of an inch. And uh, I'm messing it up quite a bit here. So I'm gonna go get my loppers. Just cut right through that in a nice clean cut, which is better than what I'm doing now, damaging the tree. It's quite a bit of damage, actually. I mean, it'll be fine, but I'd rather have a clean cut. So, I'm gonna go get my loppers. Many people suggest inverting the sod, ripping it up, and placing it into the bottom of the hole before the tree. I recommend you avoid that. Placing live plant material into the ground jumpstarts a decomposition process down there that, at the same time, inhibits root growth for most plants. It's the same reason farmers wait a few weeks after plowing under a field of sod. It needs to rot a bit before seeds will sprout and roots will grow freely. To be sure, the tree will grow if you put the sod below the roots. It will just be slower to get established. The sod has a better use above ground anyway.
final step I take when transplanting a large tree is to prune it fairly heavily. I just removed a lot of this tree's ability to gather water and nutrients from the soil. It will grow all of that back, and then some, but right now, I need to help balance that loss by reducing the amount of above-ground tissue the roots need to feed and water. This is also a good time to reassess the shape of the tree. In my case, I want the scaffolding to be parallel to the electric fence, so I can easily get by on either side of it when I'm mowing around the perimeter of the garden.